Tesla's quarterly numbers. Is it going to be a big hit or a big old fat mess? I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. Well, this is either the live stream on Friday or it's the, uh, you know, uh, condensed version over the weekend on the main channel. So if you're on my Tesla live, that's the live one on Friday. And if you're on my Tesla weekend and I'll post links to the other because, you know, sometimes you want to get in on the chat. There will be a Q&A afterwards. Still on the backup machine, as everyone in the chat probably knows. Yeah, big hit, big miss, big mess. Hmm, tough call. Here we go. Production. This isn't my usual chart, as you'll notice. My usual chart remains in the shop uh, with my computer. I was just going to get it off the hard drive, but <clears throat> he assured me it would be done in two days. <laughs> And we're heading into day nine. So yeah, I need to make sure I have all of them in my cloud account in the future. Fremont SNX paid little mind to Q1. These are not necessarily up to date. Uh, they're just guidelines. Q1, uh, Q3, model SNX. What do we got? I just said, uh, what's the difference here? 15%, 15% again. That's what I'm saying. We know it's not fully ramped because there are a lot of people still waiting on their S's and X's. Jeff has been very patient and uh, he's been waiting a long time for his X. Fremont, 3 and Y. Now we know they've been humming. They've been doing really good. Uh, Tesla employee reveals huge Q3 delivery surge at Fremont. But <clears throat> this leak, while I believe it, is absolutely anecdotal. This is at 4 a.m. The parking lot is full. What's going on? Uh, everyone's there. Everyone's busy. So it could be a great quarter. But I said, I said it would go up by the difference. An incremental increase from Q2. This minus this, uh, this minus this, add them together. You get the idea. 117, 314. That's my estimate. Shanghai 3 and Y. Now that's where it gets a lot more difficult. Maybe we'll skip that one for a minute. Why don't we do that? Let's go to Berlin Model Y. I'm saying 7,000. Uh, oh, sorry. 7,000. I'm saying 12,420. Nice. Not scientific. We're getting back into, this is like a swag, a scientific wild ass guess, but without the science. We've seen a lot of trains shipping them around uh, throughout Europe. We've seen a lot of deliveries, but we haven't seen a lot of data that would get us to where we're going. We do know that uh, Berlin has achieved a thousand cars in a week in June. So partway through the quarter, they got to a thousand cars a week. Maybe they are past it, but it's really hard to get information that would let us know what they're up to. That's why I said 12,420. Texas is catching up. They've achieved a run rate of 1,000 a week, but they only achieved it at the end of August. And they were going pretty slow at the beginning of the quarter. So I came up with a bit more conservative number here, 8,200. Also, a wag. And we know they're being shipped out on trains. We know the volume is good. Uh, we know the volume is still increasing. We don't know what any of the actual numbers are, but let's talk Shanghai. So these numbers are not guesses. These are the wholesale producer published numbers. So what is the number for, for September? There had been a rumor of 100,000. Um, I had never seen anything on the ground that would support that. So what I always do, here's some of my metrics. I look at how many of the chargers are in use. I look at how full this lot is. Um, and as you know, I also uh, count the chillers, the air, the air, the heat exchange chilling towers, which is right here. And you'll see that um, m many, many of them are not in motion. That tells me that the plant is not at capacity. Earlier in the quarter, they were running at capacity. We can look at the weather. 
68 degrees. It's not like it's 30 degrees out and getting rid of the heat is very easy. You would think these might be moving faster if production's nice and high. And this isn't a one-off. This is on the 23rd, but also on the 15th and 16th, both Wu Wa's and Jason Yang's videos, these were running at under 50% capacity, leading me to believe we are off the peak. This is nice to see, the lot being full, the cars being loaded, the chargers being mostly in use. But without the condensers going, without the cooling towers going, they are not at full capacity. So, let's see what we said for our numbers. For the Model 3, I said 10% uh, better than their best month ever. Just remember, they retooled. They should be able to achieve a 10% improvement over the best month ever. This number might be a little optimistic. There are some delivery issues at the end. Uh, Troy recently pointed out, today I think, that normally they begin exporting again on the 26th of a month, and this month they did it on the 21st, meaning they may not have enough local deliveries to fill orders. Overall, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it'll be fine. Looking at the Model Y, more interesting. Uh, what I did is took the very good month. There was no retooling. This is just a line that runs, and I said 2% better than that month. Yeah, yeah, 2% giving us a total per model, 57 for the Model 3, 142 for the Model Y. Now this number may prove a bit optimistic, but it gives us a total of 199, 572. That'd be great, wouldn't it? That'd be great, a run rate over, well, at 800,000. So let's pop it in, 199, 576 for a quarterly total estimated <clears throat> 356, 383. Now this is about in line with Wall Street, but I think Wall Street is going to be backing down their numbers uh, at, the, at the very end of the month, as they often do. They look at people like me, they look at people like Troy, and Troy, um, I believe, is going to be revising his numbers downward uh, on the 30th. And I don't remember what his last number was at, but it was higher than this, but I don't remember how much. Uh, a fair amount. Yeah, it was in the 360 plus range, but I don't remember the actual number. So this is, for now, my number. I'm going to look at Shanghai again. Shanghai is the big question mark. I've got a, a request out to Joe Tetmeyer to see what he thinks the production is for Texas. I may revise that, but that would likely be an upward revision where this could be a downward revision. The rest of them I'm quite comfortable with. 356, 383. So yeah, we're running quick, we're running early. Plenty of time for questions. I've got a couple more metrics to show. Let's see if I forgot. Yeah, I'm sure I've got a bunch of stuff here I didn't show. We showed that. Ah, yes, the production. 356. Let's talk about this real quick. If Shanghai is at 200,000, let's look back in time. 200,000, that used to be global production not that long ago. Six, six, five and a half years ago, that was the annual production, and now it's Shanghai. Just, just Shanghai. 356, if we get that, we should, I think we should. That's, you know, again, just a couple years ago, that's a whole year's production ish, right about here, middle of 27, middle of. 2017 to 2018 is when they finally crossed that annual threshold. And it would put them on a run rate in excess of 1.2 million. Yeah, it'd be 1.5-ish. Yeah, hmm? yeah, yeah, something like that. So the other uh, numbers I wanted to point out, and it's like sometimes you look at these and you think, boy, that's just terrible. Is it? Because let's talk about how many dollars 8,200 units is. Now, I just put in a margin of 10,000. We know it's probably closer to 20,000. At 10,000, it'd be $82 million in markup from that quarter. So 164,000 is probably, 164 million is probably more accurate. 
164 million. The factory only cost like three billion dollars. So that's good money. Good look at Berlin and see it's quite a bit more. It's and again, I don't believe 10,000 is the margin. I believe 20,000 is the margin because they're starting at the top with the most premium models. So this is probably a quarter billion dollars in profit off a factory that only cost three-ish billion. A quarter billion. So per year, that's a billion dollars. That's three years to get your money back on the entire factory. And a factory, unchanged, has a useful life of five, ten years. Now, of course, they're always changing. They're always making improvements. But even at five years or ten years, even at ten years, they would triple their profit. They'd get $12 billion, and that's without ramping. That's before they ramp. So let's get silly. $2 billion in profit this quarter, just at $10,000 markup. Now, locally in Shanghai, in China, they may only be getting $10,000 in profit. But when they export them, they get far more. But even at $10,000, that's $2 billion for a factory that costs $3.5, $4 billion. They're making their entire nut back per year, minimum. And they're still ramping. Now, Berlin, uh, sorry, Fremont, not as exciting. 1.1 billion and another. This margin is definitely low. There's no way the margin is 10,000. Why don't we change that to 30,000 on the... So, and 10,000... Uh, probably it's probably quite a bit higher, even with the Model 3s going out to Hertz and others. But even still, you're talking $1.6 billion a quarter in profit from their least efficient factory by far. Wow, that's exciting to me. So that's the production. If that's all you came for, you know. Let's uh, take a look over at the other stuff, see what we've got. Well, Covered there it, it is, Covered. and there you go. This has been the condensed version. If you want to go back and see the whole uncut 30-ish minute version on the second channel, go to My Tesla Live, link in the description, all that good stuff. Huge thanks, as always, to my Patreons who get early access, bonus content, a bunch of other good stuff, and access to my 11-year production prediction tracker the $10 level and above. So, what did I miss or misunderstand? Leave me all your thoughts, your wisdom, your juicy ideas, your blind and brilliance into them in the comments below. And stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the other side.